Hey everyone, welcome back to Road Stops Buying Stuff. If you are new to my channel, um, the premise of my channel, as you may be able to tell from the name, Road Stops Buying Stuff, is that my content is generally around the fact that I am doing a no-buy year. This is my first year that my no-buy has extended past beauty, but it's actually my third beauty no-buy year. So I went in my beauty no-buy in 2018, so I've done that 2018, 2019, and into this year, 2020. But this year I have extended it to include um, clothing, homewares, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, if you want the details, I did do an intro video that really details exactly what I'm allowed and not allowed to buy and I also track a monthly budget. So today's video is kind of the antithesis to what I usually talk about. Today I'm actually going to discuss some new products. So first of all, I haven't broken my no buy to buy these. I'm discussing some Lee Eldridge lipsticks which my parents have actually purchased for me for Christmas. I wanted to do this video just because because of the nature of my life choices at the moment um, I don't really get to participate in the side of YouTube where people review new products and new launches so the fact that I was getting something that was kind of new I wanted to actually you know, take that opportunity to participate in that conversation. But once I film this video, I am going to have to give them back and I won't get them back again until Christmas. So these are gifts. Um, I haven't broken my no-buy. Obviously, with Elise Eldridge launches, the way that she's done them so that she launches them each year and once they're gone, they're gone. I knew I needed to get them uh, ASAP because if I waited until near Christmas, they were going to be gone as usual. I have wanted some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks for absolutely ages so she first brought them out in I think November 2018 is the video is when she put up the video about her first launch and I was on my no buy at that point and particularly the first year of my beauty no buy would have been coming to an end then and I was still really overwhelmed by how much stuff I still had. I've spoken about this before but I definitely thought one year of a beauty no buy was going to solve all my problems um, and it, it definitely didn't. The problem was bigger than I had sort of thought it would be. So even come Christmas 2018, I didn't want makeup. I didn't want more stuff coming in. Um, and then she did the Summer Pinks collection in 2019. And again, I was on my no-buy. This year, I'm coming to the end of the third year of my beauty no-buy and I feel like I am, I would like new products. I am kind of craving new beauty products. So I decided to go ahead and ask for some of these for Christmas this year. First of all, they came in this box, which has Lisa's logo. Um, I'll do, I've filmed some cutaway shots to show you the packaging. Um, so I thought the packaging was absolutely beautiful. And then in terms of what I picked, I got one of the kits. They come in these beautiful velvet pouches. Got Lisa's logo on the zip. The floral pouch you can only get when you buy a kit. I'm not going to talk about the kit today because I've already filmed the majority of the actual content of this video in terms of discussing the actual lipsticks. So it's it's quite long. I thought it was going to be a really quick video but it, it's not. So this video is going to be about the three individual lipsticks and I'll do a different video about the kit. In this little pouch this is one of the make your own lip kit choices so I picked three individual lipsticks and put them in this green velvet pouch because I love green, it's my favourite colour. And the three lipsticks that I chose were Velvet Dragon, Velvet Jazz, which is the one from the first launch, I've been like, really want that, and Skyscraper Rose. So I've got two of the velvet formula here and one of the normal formula. I will show you some close-ups. It's not particularly new to the conversation, but the velvet effect on these lipsticks. I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit like the Patrick Ta lipstick which is very very matte and it's almost like almost like little beads on the edge of it. It almost looks slightly furry when you look at it which sounds disgusting but it is what it is and that's kind of what I expected this to be but it wasn't so I'll show you some close-ups so you can see the texture of these velvet lipsticks in comparison to the Patrick Ta so that you can see they are not the same and then in terms of appearance the Skyscraper Rose lipstick is the only one of the the three in this kit that is not velvet. The non-velvet lipstick comes with Lisa's logo etched into the front. I'm absolutely thrilled to finally own some Lisa Eldridge products. I really want some of her rings as well but they are um, slightly out of my price range at the moment. I need to 
save up and I feel like I'm not responsible enough at the moment to save up for a ring because I feel like I will end up losing it. Lipsticks are the way forward at the moment for me. I thought what I'd do is structure this video with a section for each lipstick, show you on. So what I've done is I filmed each of them being like patted on so you can see it's a stain and built up. I've done a wear test on Velvet Dragon and Skyscraper Rose. I didn't do a wear test on Velvet Jazz just because it's the same formula as Velvet Dragon. I hope this video will be helpful and informative if you are considering purchasing any of these lipsticks. Um, it's been three days of filming so it's been quite a labour of love for me. I have done my makeup the exact same way every single day that I've been filming so that the lipsticks are the only thing that has changed. So I'll insert the footage now talking you through the rest of my makeup other than the lipsticks. So in terms of... come closer. In terms of the rest of my face I was trying to do something fairly neutral just so that I could try on all the different lipsticks and it wouldn't be too strong a look. So I have got on the Benefit browsings in my brows so powder to make them a little bit softer. My eyeshadow is this one from Love the Planet, it's the shade Neutral Brown. Um, so it's, it is very much just a neutral brown. Um, so I built it up a little bit more on the lid using this brush which is from RMS number 10E brush and then I just blended it out at the edges with um, I think this is a small tapered blending brush an E45 by Sigma. My mascara is this one from Chanel, it's the Le Volume Stretch de Chanel mascara in the shade 10 Noir. That is my eye makeup then on my cheeks I have got Tarte Party blush which was the Sephora gift a few years ago now so that's my blush so just quite a neutral blush again um, and then just a touch of my hourglass highlight so that's what's on my face other than obviously I've got um, like foundation, concealer and powder but that's my, my colour products that are on my face. And just to quickly finish off before we jump into the actual lipsticks, today that is the makeup that I'm wearing um, and I'm wearing Velvet Dragon which I'm wearing today with Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude Lip Liner underneath it but you will see me in the wear test show you it without a lip liner so you'll see it um, exactly as it is as it performs on its own and yeah let's get on into the sections of the video so first up is Velvet Dragon <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try out Velvet Dragon. This is my first ever Lisa Eldridge lipstick. This is the shade that I am probably the most excited about. So I have nothing on my lips at all. I did put lip balm on um, when I was doing my skincare etc. But I have wiped it off so I've just wiped my lips with a towel to make sure there is nothing on there. And I'm going in with Velvet Dragon. <laughs> that is it as a sort of stain and patted out. I've come closer. Yeah so that's what that looks like. It's not kind of emphasising lines in my lips and it's it's although I blended that with my finger it's quite a smooth line. It's not um kind of bleeding over so so that's it kind of patted on and I'm gonna go for fully putting on the way. I wanted to show you that just because I know that's how some people will wear it. I'll wear it just at full opacity so let's just see what that means. This is Velvet Dragon. So I thought it was pulling quite orange at first when I was doing it just as stain and blending it out um, but when I swiped it on kind of properly from the bullet it is definitely a red. I also like so story time um, I don't know if it's to do with wearing the masks I don't know if it's to do with the fact that I am not getting my upper lip threaded. I, I don't really know what it is but I, and I don't know if it's just literally the passing of time and a sign of aging but I have felt 
recently like my lip line has been very questionable um, I got a few lip liners for my birthday because I was deliberately asking for them because I felt like my lip line was disappearing and that lip my lipsticks were feathering all the time and that's actually why I asked for the kit that I got because it had a lip liner in it but I feel like now obviously I've literally just put it on so it's too early to make the call but I feel like I don't have that issue with this I feel like it's um it doesn't need a lip liner like I'm not saying it wouldn't benefit from one and um, because I can to think most lipsticks are better with a liner just because I don't think anyone has completely naturally perfect lips but I don't feel like this is going over my face or moving or going where I've not put it and where I don't want it to go basically but it feels really really comfortable on the lips it doesn't feel you know like Ruby Woo for example which is like so superman famous for being so superman you know it doesn't feel like that it doesn't feel heavy on the lips at all like I can tell I've got something on my lips which I, I like because I'm not I, I don't like these lipsticks that I can completely forget they're on and then next thing I know they'll be like all over my face as I eat and drink and forget that they're there so I, I can tell I've got something in my lips which I don't mind in the slightest and um, but it doesn't feel heavy or cakey or drying I feel like obviously I've been on my no buy beauty wise for three years now 2018 2019 2020 so like near like this is my third year of a beauty no buy so other than products that I've got as gifts or go on holiday in the past few years within the rules of my no buy I have not had new lip products and I do feel one of the things I can really tell about my lip products um this year in particular and just as time goes on and they obviously do start to expire and turn and um, I can really feel them almost like they go on my lips and then it's like they kind of shrink almost once they're on my lips a little bit and I can sort of feel them almost pulling at my lips and um, which I, I definitely don't have with this and I feel like sometimes with some of them that's a sign of it of the product expiring but sometimes even with like a brand new lipstick some lipsticks do do that pretty early on um, and this isn't doing that at all although it's really quite defined by itself without a lip liner I don't feel like it's um doing that shrinkage thing so yeah it feels really really comfortable the order you're seeing the clips of this is this is the first clip that I filmed of this video but basically I want to film this video and realised I have finished my micellar water so I'm going to walk to Tesco now to buy micellar water and I'm going to obviously have to put my face mask on when I go in the shop. I feel like if you told me a year ago I would be testing a lipstick to see how it fares under a face mask like I just wouldn't have believed you um, but yeah so I'm going to go to Tesco I'm going to wear my face covering whilst I'm buying micellar water to come back and take this off and put the next one on and also to swatch various lipsticks and try and find comparisons within my collection etc for you so yeah I'm gonna go do that so next clip that you see will be me coming back from Tesco and showing you how this is worn under a mask just wanted to also quickly show you this um, so I've turned the ring light off so this is natural daylight but it's really grey outside today so it's not the brightest of days um, but just in the interest of showing you this uh, in daylight without the the artificial lighting um, so yeah this is Velvet Dragon and I am now away to Tesco glamour. Hey guys so I am back from Tesco it's six o'clock but it is completely dark outside it's just been a really miserable day so I am on the ring light again and um, but yeah I haven't touched this lipstick since the clip where you saw me put it on and it's still very much intact so I'm gonna give you a really close zoom in that you'll probably not thank me for but just so you can see exactly how it's on my lips after having been wearing my mask so it was raining outside so excuse uh, some of my other makeup has moved about but so you can see my lips basically very impressed up close I think you can see a little bit of smudging so this was something I wanted to address so I've still I've not put a lip liner on or used a lip brush this is straight from the bullet and I probably would use a lip liner with it in future but 
um, obviously I wanted to test out just how it was exactly on its own. So you can see when I'm moving my mouth that I have got lipstick all over my lip, which you're probably like, yes, well done, that's what you're supposed to do. But I have quite a small mouth. And by, I don't mean I have thin lips, I'm aware that I don't have super thin lips, but I don't have big lips. I've got small lips and I've got a small mouth. I'm, I'm a small person overall and it's never particularly bothered me. They are small and that's not the fashion, but it doesn't really bother me. However, in terms of the shape of my lips, when I smile, the edges of the top of my lip disappear so they almost start kind of resting the corners of my lips when my lips are closed and when I smile you don't really see them you don't see both lips the way that you would if somebody who had really sort of full lips that sort of sit almost on top of each other if that makes sense and you see that pigment right to the edge so you mine kind of disappear but what happens with that is that, so one of the lipsticks that I noticed this being an issue with is the Nars Audacious formula, which I have such a love-hate relationship with. So they are very creamy and pigmented, which I like, but they move, they slip so, so much. And if I take the Nars Audacious formula or any kind of super creamy lipstick formula, if I go right to the edges of my top and bottom lips with one of those thick, creamy, movable, slippy formulas, the corners of my mouth just end up a mess because when they close together, they move the lipstick about. You know, it's physically rubbing, so it moves and it gets messy. So whenever I wear an Ars Audacious lipstick, I have to wear it almost, like, if I've got my lips, I have to wear it in the bits of my lips that are only visible when my mouth is closed. So like this middle bit and I can't take it right to the corners. What I need to do is take my lip liner right into the corners so that there's a bit of colour there so that when I am talking and my lips are moving it doesn't look like I've not filled in my whole lip. I actually, I think it was one of my most recent videos, I was wearing an Ars Audacious lipstick in Shirley and the lip liner I used was a MAC pencil but it couldn't stand up to the way that my lips press together and rub because that's the thing they're rubbing off um, the product when it's there so a lot of lip liners just don't actually stick it's why I like liquid lipsticks so much because they tend to stick but then they're very drying because they tend to stick but I feel like with this lipstick I've taken it right into the corners and it stayed where I've put it for the most part and um, enough that I feel happy with it yes when I zoom right in I feel like you can see when I zoom right in, I think you can see a little bit how when that lips rested there, it has moved this product here. Um, it's a little bit more feathery than it was. It's not quite as clean cut as, you know, the lines elsewhere. But I'm very, very happy with it. I don't think it's that noticeable overall. And the other side of my lip shape is that sometimes if I do wear a super creamy formula and take it right to the edges, when I smile, it's like, it, you can see the product mushing up at the sides. Like the corners are just very messy um, a lot of the time just because that's what my lip shape is. And I feel like although this has moved maybe a little bit here and here, it's not moved problematically. You know, I don't feel like my makeup is all over the place and I feel like when I'm moving my lips, it looks absolutely fine, but I also feel like when my lips are not moving, it still looks fine. So yeah, my first impression, having been wearing this lipstick for maybe like an hour and a half now, you know, my lips don't feel dry, although it feels like it's set in place. My lips don't feel, you know, that pruny way when something's like set in place and shrunk. That's not happened even over the hour and a half. Um, I've also had something to eat. I ate a chocolate bar because I'm very, very healthy. Um, that I got myself a Jesco when I was getting my micellar water and you know it's not moved. I'm very very impressed basically. I really yeah I feel like I mean Lee Seldridge is such a celebrated makeup artist I would have presumed her products were going to be good 
um, but I do feel it's very very good. So as you can tell I really really love this formula and this colour. I'm so so pleased with it. I kind of thought in terms of comparisons when Lisa was doing her launch video and she talked about this and she was calling it a kind of rusty red I thought it was going to be almost sort of gingerbready but actually I've not been able to dupe any of the three of these but I am going to show you some comparisons against other things within my collection that are similar so that if you own them you can see how that compares and decide for you if it's different enough to be worth bringing an extra product into your collection. Um, so yeah, let's get on into the comparisons. Okay, so the first swatch I'll do is obviously Velvet Dragon, so I'll put that right in the middle. Next to that I'm going to swatch the Too Faced Gingerbread Man Liquid Lipstick. These I was expecting to be really close, but as you can see, Gingerbread Man is far darker. Velvet Dragon is much more of a red than it is a brownie red, if that makes sense. So upon realising that Gingerbread Man was definitely too far in the brown way, I pulled out MAC Chili. As you can see, it's not the same, but I think it's the closest thing that I personally own. I'm going to show you a couple more just so that you can see how it kind of compares. And these things are definitely all related. They're all in a certain gingerbready, rusty red autumnal colour family, which I absolutely adore, but I definitely don't own any dupes for this at all. The next swatch I'm going to do is Elamasca Howl. This is another one that I think is nearer what I have that's closer, but as you can see, it's still not the same. Now, this is definitely a yellowy based red. It's not really an orange red in the sense of like MAC Lady Danger or anything like that. Um, and just to show you that, I've pulled out MAC Social, so you can see that that's brighter. Um, and I've also picked out uh, Diego Della Palma. This is the lipstick in Savannah, which is another really beautiful sort of in the gingerbread family, but still not the same as Velvet Dragon here. So everything else that I owned was either pulling too brown or too orange. As you can see, I really wasn't getting anything that was a true red that wasn't most of my reds that I owned were like a blue based red. To go back to liquid lipsticks, I thought it was maybe worth showing you Kat Von D Project Chimps, if any of you own that, which is one of my favourite reds. Again, deeper though, not the same. And I also pulled out Colourpop Who Run This, which is, again, I mean, I'm saying all of these are some of my favourites, but these are some of my favourite shades, so all of these lipsticks are real favourites within my collection. Um, so that's Colourpop who run this. And next to that I'm going to put the NYX Full Throttle lipstick in the shade Sandman. So that's my arm so far, so too orangey, the most closely related. And then going into these gingerbread tones that are really too brown. The last two that I'm going to do are just ones that I think are really well known. Um, so MAC Marrakesh, as you can see, is much browner, as is NARS Mona, which was the kind of other one that had sprung to mind when I was looking at this originally. That might have been the same, but as you can see, far darker, far browner, um, because Mona was really described as a rusty red by Rachel Goodwin the year that she put it on Emma Stone for the Oscars. Um, you know, she talked about that rusty 90s red. So because Lisa described this as a rusty red, these two were sort of linked to my head, but as you can see, I really don't think I own anything the same as this. So it really is, the true gingerbreads are more brown than this. This really is a red, it's not a, it is a rusty deep red, but it's not browny red. It is like a yellowy red, but not, not dark enough to be brown. Um, and then yeah, these are the closest reds that I could find um, in terms of being my reds that are not blue based reds, but none of them are a dupe. So that was a very, very welcome discovery for me that I didn't own something that was basically exactly the same. Um, so yeah, it really is quite unique within my collection, as you can see from my arm here. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely love Velvet Dragon. I'm so, so pleased that I own it. And the next lipstick that we're going to discuss is Velvet Jazz. Okay, so I'm going to use Velvet Jazz now, um, which I'm I'm really excited about all of them. I was just going to be like, I'm so excited. I mean, I'm excited about all of them. Um, I'm really excited to use this one uh, with some other things that I've asked for for Christmas. I'm 
opening I'm going to get um, and just have a real sort of 1930s moment. I'm very into a vintage moment at the moment. Um, moment. So I will tap this on as a stain the way I did with Velvet Dragon, have a look at that and then build it up. And that's it just stained on and blended out with my finger. I'm not really one for a stain, it's not. I'm kind of somebody who's either wearing makeup or not wearing makeup. I wouldn't tend to do this um, but I really like it as a stain and I feel like although it's so light it's not kind of um, you know how some things if you've got something on but it's not particularly thick it can kind of sink into your lines and things like it's not doing that as a stain. It looks really natural and there's not like little gritty bits of product does that make sense so that's velvet jazz stained and let's go let's go whole hog on it now which i can't wait to do oh this color is so beautiful and um, i've got friends getting married not for two years yet but i already know i'm gonna wear this lipstick to their wedding and um, because it just matches my shoes and things that i'm wearing I, yes i do have a plan for a wedding I'm going to in two years time. Oh it's so pretty. So again this is like straight on no lip liner or anything. So that is Velvet Jazz. Oh I really like that. It's so pretty. So I've just tied up Velvet Jazz with um, a little bit of lip liner, so this is the Rimmel um, Lasting Finish A Thousand Kisses Stay On Lip Contouring Pencil in the shade Black Tulip. So this is actually on Lisa's website. She does have a post that's got her lipsticks. They're a guide to suggested lip liners because obviously she's not made lip liners for every lipstick. It's just the ones that are in the kit. So this is one of the ones that she has suggested uh, for this colour. So I use that and I do feel it's good suggestion on her part and um, yes yeah, it's, it's worked really nicely uh, just to clean that up a little bit. This is actually the colour that out of the ones that I got I kind of felt I was really excited to get it because it's so up my street but it's so up my street that I was quite convinced I'd be able to do this within my collection. I definitely thought I would more or less own this colour already and I do have colours that are similar so I'm going to show you them but I don't own um, a perfect match for this at all as far as I can tell so yeah let's uh, let me go through them and show you how it compares to other colours in my collection. So there's Velvet Jazz right in the middle there. So first of all um, I'm going to swatch this is from Lipstick Queen and it's the shade Wine Sinner so one of the other lip liners I think in her the intro video that she did when these first came out in 2018 um, it was a lipstick queen lip liner in the shade wine that she'd used with it um, and that lipstick like that um, lip liner has been discontinued but I thought it was probably quite close to the wine lipstick so I think this is probably one of the closest shades that I've got so that is lipstick queen wine and then that is velvet jazz by Lisa Eldridge now one of the things that I really really love about this is it's a real burgundy undertone but without leaning purple um, and when I was thinking that I thought about a lipstick I'd said that about recently which was Nars Audacious in the shade Bet. I'm not sure if Bet's maybe been discontinued um, but that is Bet next to Velvet Jazz. So again these colours are close but they're not exactly the same um, so Bet's got actually a little bit more purple in it even than Velvet Jazz does and um, so those are those three and then because I thought Bet had a little bit more purple in it I pulled out the Nars Audacious lipstick in the shade Olivia so that's Olivia which you can see immediately is it's still a really deep red but it's much more red than it is burgundy the way that Velvet Jazz is then I have pulled out this is the NYX full throttle lipstick this is the shade number one con artist which I'll put on 
this side here. So again, very much in the family. You can see that I really like this kind of colour. Um, but again, it's not an exact dupe. And then I pulled out four from MAC that I thought might be related to Velvet Jazz. First one is Dubonnet. So that is Dubonnet at the top there and Velvet Jazz. So they are quite close, but they're not exact. Then I've got Viva Glam 1. This is in limited edition packaging from last year, but it's just the standard Viva Glam 1 shade. So you can see that that's kind of much more red, much more sort of bricky. Then I've got MAC Studded Kiss which is more purple than Velvet Jazz, and MAC Diva at the bottom. So that is Diva there, which again is more purple. So this is Velvet Jazz here. So we've got MAC Diva, MAC Studded Kiss, um, NARS Olivia, NARS Bet, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Jazz, Lipstick Queen Wine Sinner, NYX Con Artist, MAC Dubonnet, and then MAC Viva Glam 1. They are related. It's it's not that I've got absolutely nothing in the family. It's very much in the family of lipstick colours that I really like. Um, hence why I definitely thought I probably would be able to dupe it. But none of these are exact. Um, I think the closest is probably Dubonnet looking at it. Yep. Wine Center or Dubonnet I think are the closest to. But... They're not the same and Dubonnet is a completely different formula than Velvet Jazz. So Velvet Jazz is Lisa Eldridge matte formula. Dubonnet is a MAC amplified. So yeah, if you own any of these lipsticks, this is how they compare to each other. Once again, before we move on, this is Velvet Jazz. Um, so I'm not going to do like a wear test of anything in this because I feel quite uh, confident that it will perform exactly the same as Velvet Dragon. It's the same formula, etc. Uh, so yeah, that is my swatched arm and I'm going to move on to Skyscraper Rose. Okay so we are going on to Skyscraper Rose. Um, so as I said in the intro, Skyscraper Rose is the one that has the Lisa emblem in the front. So it's not one of the velvets. So the actual tubes are completely the same, they've got the Lisa logo on the top. But if you keep the box, it does say insanely saturated lip colour on the side of the Skyscraper Rose box, whereas it says true velvet lip colour on the sides of the boxes for the velvets. On the Skyscraper Rose page on Lisa's website, it says, this is an electrically modern, full coverage, fuchsia pink with a saturated matte finish. And then it goes down to say, so pigmented and so creamy, a truly dreamy texture that glides on seamlessly and gives 100% full coverage with a demi matte finish and weightless feel. So I'm not sure how this is made because it says matte finish in the first sentence and then demi matte finish in the second sentence. But yeah, we're gonna do what we've done with the others. I'm gonna put it on as a stain first, see how that feels and then build it up. So that's it as a stain. So again, it's not emphasizing any texture or anything like that. And I'm gonna go in and build it up now. So as you can see, I've done that just straight from the lid and then I'm going to use a lip brush just to neaten the edges, so I'm not going to use a lip liner. Okay, so that is me. I've not got a lip liner on, um, but I did use my Spacing K uh, lip brush and I also tidied around the edge with some concealer, uh, but that is me kind of built it up. So you can see I've overdone slightly here just using the lipstick. Um, nothing major, as I said, like my lips are small. That doesn't it bother me particularly but I just wanted to see how the formula would be where I would kind of put my lip liner usually and um, so yeah that is it built up. In terms of dupes for this within my collection I don't often go for pink I'm more of a red or a sort of gingerbread like the first two colours the Velvet Dragon Velvet Jazz are much more typical this is quite different for me and um, so I only have three other similar-ish shades and well I'll show you them. 
So we'll do this on my hand because there only is four swatches to be done. So there is Skyscraper Rose. So the closest thing I would say I have to it is MAC Girl About Town, which is a different formula. So obviously I've only had this on not for very long, but I would say it, it feels quite matte. It definitely doesn't feel like it's going to slip about all over my face. So there's Girl About Town. So as you can see, they're not exactly the same and Girl About Town is an amplified formula, not a matte formula. So they're very, very different in terms of finish, but the colours are related, I would say. Then I've also got MAC Lickable, which is a cream machine formula. I'll put that there, but again, you can see that's getting further away from it. And then I've got Estee Lauder Raspberry Pop Lipstick, which I will do on the other side. And again, it's a completely different formula. This is a much more wet formula. But I don't have a lot of pink lipstick, so I didn't have a lot to compare it against. These are the four, so this is Estee Lauder Raspberry Pop, this is Lisa Eldridge, Skyscraper Rose, MAC Girl About Town and MAC Lickable. Um, so yeah, none of them I would say are a dupe. I would say Girl About Town is kind of the closest, but it's not, not particularly close at all. Again, no dupes, but I'm not somebody with an extensively pink collection so I probably was never going to do it this one but I do really really like it. I actually picked this so I was nearly going to pick Velvet Morning because the original three that she came out with were Velvet Morning, Velvet Jazz and Velvet Ribbon. So the kit that I've got is Velvet Ribbon then obviously I've got Velvet Jazz so I was going to go for Velvet Morning and then I didn't because when I was looking at it it seems to pull more orangey in some people and I thought I've got a lot of orangey reds, so I decided not to get it. I could see me buying it in the future, to be honest, given how much I've liked these ones so far, but I decided not to get it. And I went for this one because it is different, and I knew it was going to be different to anything else that I owned, um, but I remember when she did the video, now that would have been 2019, when she first did her Summer Pinks collection, um, and she said she said she'd use this shade on Ava Green, um, who I just I love Ava Green. I just think she is the most beautiful person I have ever seen in my whole life. Um, but I just every time I read an interview with her or whatever, she always just comes across really well. So yeah, I just I adore Ava Green. So I picked this one. Um, because she said she'd used it in Ava and that had stuck in my head from her doing the intro video. But I did really like the look of Velvet Carnival, which was her new pink. So that was, it was kind of Velvet Morning, Skyscraper Rose and Velvet Carnival. Those were my sort of three. Morning get knocked out and then Skyscraper Rose versus Velvet Carnival and I thought she's used this one in Ava so I need to pick this one. And uh, yeah, like literally last night she uploaded a picture that Ava must have sent her that she'd taken wearing Velvet Carnival and I'm like, I want Velvet Carnival as well. Um, that I think I've, I've probably exhausted as many lipsticks as my parents are going to buy me for Christmas. So probably won't be getting Velvet Carnival this Christmas, but maybe in the future. Yeah, that, that is Sky Safe for Rose. I just thought I'd tell you about how Ava has Velvet Carnival, so now I want Velvet Carnival as well. I imagine Ava has all of them. I imagine she sends Ava every single thing she makes because they obviously work together quite a lot. One of her rings is called the Ava. Like, I'm sure Ava has everything. Anyway, before this turns into how much I love Ava Green Fest, that is that lipstick on. So I am going to do a little bit of a wear test with this one. So it's quarter to four. My camera battery is flashing at me, so that's quite good because it means I can get camera charged um, and then I will report back with how this wears over the next few hours. Okay, so I left you at quarter to four. It is now half past five. I am about to have my dinner, so I wanted to just um, check in because I'm having salmon, so that's probably going to take the lipstick off. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to check in and show you this hasn't really moved very much. Um, we'll do the, the zoom in. So that's it after like an hour and 45 minutes. Um, so you can see that it's, at this side it's feathered a little bit, but not, only really when you zoom in and you're looking to try and find the issues can you really see it. You can't really see it. Um, 
you know when it's when it's zoomed out so yeah I'm given there's no lip line or anything here I'm really impressed so what I'm really impressed with so you can see there where I've just slightly overdone just to correct this side of my mouth a little bit um, and that's not feathered you know where it's feathered is obviously what I went through when I talked about velvet dragon to do with that bit of my lip here rests when my mouth is shut like you don't see that area so it's it's more pronounced on this side which is why I kind of keep turning to this side when I'm talking about it and um, so but the actual bit on the top of my lip where I've slightly overdrawn hasn't feathered at all and as I said I've been having a massive issue recently with it feathering more than usual and it's not happened with these at all again I've overdrawn just slightly there and you can I think tell when you're this close you know where the slight overdrawing or slight correction has happened but it's not bad and it, if I had a lip liner on it would be even less noticeable um, but it's not feathered there into the skin it's just literally this little bit here that's gone a bit iffy but as I say that's to do with my lip shape so if I stand back here like you know you're still quite zoomed in um, but even just as soon as I take that step back it's less of an issue and when I zoom when I zoom back out to like normal focus you know you really you, you wouldn't pick it up so in terms of the formula like I'm very impressed I can't or if I'm totally honest I can't really tell this is maybe a smidge creamier than the velvets I can't tell a massive difference in terms of how it feels or how it's performed smudged a smidgen more there but it's really really not um you know if the toss-ups are between a matte and a denim matte I feel like I would still say this is as matte as most of the MAC matte lipsticks you know it's not as matte as something like Ruby Woo which is that very extreme matte end of the scale it's not as matte as like a liquid lipstick um, but I would say this is still a matte lipstick you know it's, it feels comfortable it's not drying it's not super super matte um, but I would say this is still a matte lipstick in my opinion and I can't tell a massive difference how this feels or looks on my lips in comparison to the velvet formula maybe if I had velvet carnival <laughs> totally looking for an excuse to be like I should get velvet carnival um, you know maybe to compare like a closer shade in the different formulas because the Velvet Carnival is a velvet formula and um, you know maybe then I would notice a difference but I can't honestly say I'm noticing anything massive between the velvets and this insanely saturated lip colour and um, but I, I really like both so I'm not complaining and um, but it just means there's no I'm not there's no formula I'm picking over the other kind of thing that I prefer they, they feel very much the same to me um, in terms of how they feel on my lips. So yeah I think that is the end of the video. So you've seen Velvet Dragon and the colours that I have that are related to it. You've seen Velvet Jazz and the colours that I have that are related to it. You've seen this one with a little bit of a wear test and the colours that I have that are related. So I hope this has been interesting or helpful if you've been thinking about um, getting involved with Lisa Eldridge's products. I do have the lip kit but as I said I'm going to do that as a different video because this video has definitely been long enough already so with that in mind I'm going to stop talking I'm going to say thank you so much for watching and um, I hope it's been helpful and I hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video bye hey guys so it's completely dark outside so excuse the lighting um but I just wanted to let you know I had salmon for dinner and um that's my lipstick so I've not touched that since I did it at quarter to four I think I said it is now it's quarter to seven um so three hours and salmon for dinner and salmon and teriyaki sauce so like you know saucy oily fish and still fair I mean it's not perfect but it's um we're all about the flattering angles in this video aren't we but it's pretty impressive